We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hi guys, and welcome to Easy Street. Today is episode 34, <laughs> maybe kind of sort of. And uh, today I want to talk about paradigm shifts, but not until I tell you. You can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, which is goodtalkradio.com. Uh, we're on Spreaker and we're on iHeartRadio and all kinds of stuff. And I highly advise that you go down to the description below and check out um, all the different places you can find us. Also, don't forget to get some of our Ranger Rob booby bags because uh, it matters. <laughs> so... Anyway, guys, paradigm shift. What do I mean by paradigm shift? First of all, what is paradigm shift? Paradigm shift or paradigm is a learned uh, habit. Like, uh, oh, maybe you grew up all your life eating at the dinner table. And that would be kind of your paradigm. Um, you may believe certain, I don't know, uh, uh, superstitions or something. And that might be a paradigm you grew up with. And in order to change that, a learned behavior like that, um, you need to do a paradigm shift. Which brings me to today's show. Um, I wanted to talk about paradigm shifting because this new CV crap um, <laughs> is changing our lives dramatically. So some people are fighting it. Some people say, I'll never listen to them. Oh, it's a lockdown. It's a military coup. And uh, <laughs> don't watch AMTV. <laughs> I think he's losing it. So anyway, um, uh, so for example, um, going to the grocery store, what a nightmare still. I thought it'd get better and I see things trickling in, but oh my gosh, I've never seen the, uh, the shelves so goofed up and empty. Uh, absolutely no chicken in the Safeway here down in Arizona. Um, uh, however, they're selling a lot of chicken, <laughs> uh, turkeys and, uh, you can get turkey breast too. Anyway, uh, uh, what it's caused me and Sherry to do is a lot of times we can still get the same stuff, but it's like in a big commodity. Like we're kind of, we're so used to just walking in the store, get just what we want and all that stuff. Well, it's not true right now. So for example, cheese, I wanted shredded cheese. Oh my gosh. The whole rack was empty, but, uh, oh, there was plenty of like two pounds of it. And f suddenly Sherry and I was just looking at each other like, why can't we get this, which is cheaper and divide it up ourselves and freeze what we don't use and uh, use our uh, food saver and uh, uh, let's do it. And we never thought of that before. So that's what we did and got home and that's what we did, we separated that stuff out. Uh, cheese also, we couldn't get any sliced cheese. We had blocks of cheese. Got the looking at that going, wait a minute, why can't we make our own sliced cheese and freeze it? That way uh, we don't have to keep running to the store for this stuff. So we bought some black cheese and Sherry sliced them up and uh, kind of divided them up. And she put um, parchment paper in between each one and kind of keep, you know, how that goes. Anyway, it was really slick. She um, bagged them up, sealed them up and froze them up. And... Uh, paradigm shift <laughs> totally big paradigm shift we know how to do this stuff It's all common sense stuff is easy to do um you just got to do it and uh so the other we're also going you know it's also frustrating i can't buy any more powdered milk which i have lots of powdered milk in my storage um but uh, i just want to keep adding to it well there's none to be had and then uh for some silly reason i went to my echo and i asked it can you freeze milk? And guess what? You can. <laughs> it's like, oh, freezer space. So uh, 
we bought a little thing of uh, a right, another milk that happened to be there, and uh, we lowered the carton down um, by a couple of inches and then put it in the freezer. And apparently, it's it's amazingly okay. So <laughs> we're testing it, but it was like, all right, wait a minute, guys, it, this is a mind shift, a paradigm shift. We need to um, hunker down. And we got to keep going, quit going to the grocery store so much. So what can you do about it? Well, if you're at home, you got time, time to maybe start finding ways to store food differently. Um, if you have certain vegetables you really like, have you ever thought about learning how to do canning? It's not hard. Um, pickling super easy. You don't even have to really, I mean, you still got to boil your pots and stuff. What a great time to learn how to do something new. Maybe buy a whole bunch of cucumbers. Maybe they have plenty of cucumbers and uh, you want to make your own pickles um, or beets if you like beets. Um, also, um, asparagus, you can do uh, pickled asparagus. There's all kinds of stuff. And then uh, powdered things that you buy and you always worry that they're going to expire soon. Well, if you use the jars and if you have a vacuum sealer, you get the attachment for it. You can um, put powdered things into jars and vacuum seal them and it'll last a lot longer. Uh, so that's what we did with all of our powdered milk. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we also did it with uh, some uh, different kind of pastas that we bought, um, the kind of pastas that you would use for making a chicken noodle soup. So yeah, I am just kind of changing the way you think about grocery store. Um, some people told me they'd go to multiple grocery stores because certain ones have got things that the other ones don't. And it may be true, what a pain, but what a pain. Um, in a lot of cases, my store has what I want, but it's in different commodities that I'm not used to buying. So I had to change our paradigm. I'm asking you, um, you know, uh, it's time to change things a little bit. Now, for example, um, sorry, if she knows, <laughs> so, for example, our grandparents went through recessions, they went through depressions and they learned like, uh, I remember my grandmother used to drive me nuts about potatoes because back in the depression days, um, that's the only thing that was really easy to get and easy to feed a family with and it was affordable. So they made potatoes in every which way you can think of. And I always remembered that. And she's passed that on. Uh, she did, probably didn't mean to, but she just did it because every time we had, she cooked the dinner for us, always had potatoes. And it's like, are you kidding me? Well, now I know why. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things, uh, our folks that uh, went through World War II, um, be our grandparents, most of the ones from Depression days are past, but um, <clears throat> uh, they can tell you about all the rationing going on, the patriotism companies um, being told to make products for the United States before they made other things. Um, that was pretty common. And so uh, life changed a lot and the stores changed a lot and the attitudes changed a lot. And the question is, is that what's going to happen to us? Is, is it time for us to learn some new habits? You know, change can bring on good things. Paradigm shifts are good. We've all gotten really, uh, uh, especially our young generation of, I want it now. I, w I want it right now. I can't wait. Well, maybe it's time to start learning how to wait. Or maybe it's better to plan more or buy commodities and actually take the time and put things away and freeze them and, and store them uh, and, and, and think differently how you're buying your food, all that kind of stuff. This might be the best thing that ever happened to some of us. Now, if, obviously, if you own a business, all that stuff, um, this is not the greatest thing that ever happened. In fact, it's going to be a disaster for so many people. Um, we haven't seen really what's going to happen. We know what's, uh, this is, this is bad. Um, so many people are getting laid off. We don't feel it yet because it's so, everything's happening so fast. Uh, our last recession, it didn't happen this fast. This is happening fast. And sooner or later, you're going to realize stores are going to have inventory problems. Businesses are going to have supply problems. Um, there's cash is going to be a problem. Um, 
yes, I actually have been buying silver. Uh, not a lot, just a little bit. And I've also been pulling out cash. Um, I highly recommend uh, you have a thousand or more um, just on hand in case one week to just like the banks are going, I'm not giving out cash this week. Um, I think uh, luckily Sharon and I did this paradigm shifting about um, two months ago thinking, you know, something's bad. This is bad. Let's just do a few things and uh, if you know buy more food and all these things and really build up before just on the intuition we think something was bad oh my gosh that was the best thing we ever did because now we got all the stuff we wanted uh, we got the 10,000 rolls of <laughs> pa toilet paper and paper towels we got those months ago uh, only because at first in January and February we're going this is not good let's start doing it now I'm so glad we did um, what I'm asking you guys is to start thinking about um, uh, things you never thought about before, planning a little more. Um, I truly think we're going to see some hard times. Um, I can tell you one thing in 2008, they didn't help us much when we were all getting our butts kicked, but at least they seem like they uh, have the intention of helping us maintain through this because they really look at, let's shut down everything freeze it make everybody hold still for a little bit and get control of this cv stuff and then we'll turn it back on and hopefully everything will still be in place even though we'll take business loans and, and checks and things and we just kind of resume and i think it's not going to be completely as pretty as that but that's certainly their mindset and that's pretty cool um very expensive but really cool uh, let's hope that works after years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Alrighty, we are back. Don't forget to go to Amazon and pick up your Ranger Rob poopy bags. You'll be glad you did. So, you guys, uh, the last show, for, uh, some of you guys that shot our, um, <laughs> got our last show. Uh, yes, I'm working in the swamp today. <laughs> How's that for a pretty background? Uh, I thought maybe, uh, you know, we showed you the new German Shepherd we got. So I created a one minute puppy happiness. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I got one minute of just puppy happiness. So here we go. with some puppy happiness so you saw um actually we just threw a couple of pieces of film together to show you that you know we're trying to introduce this uh german shepherd puppy to a full-grown seven-year-old um uh, chocolate lab and uh they're doing really good i'm really surprised uh she definitely uh is respectful of cinder the older dog the older dog definitely occasionally has a reminder that she is king um, but they're doing all right. I got to give them credit. So it's been kind of tough. Um, what a great puppy. Super smart. Um, so what we do for training is I'll take Cinder for a walk or play in the backyard, close the doors. 
she does one on one time with the treats and the sitting and the downs and she's already sitting down um laying down um standing um just in two episodes so uh, i got an incredibly smart dog in my hands so um which will be good you don't want a big dog that you can't control uh, just bad 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 so also want to remind you guys don't forget to get your easy street hat um, this is what they look like um, I uh, <laughs> I think I messed mine up today yeah something or just funny lighting anyway uh, uh, they're uh, down in the description below they're linked you can buy them on Amazon and uh, yeah so they're really nice they're under $20 they're uh, they're a great hat I like them and uh, uh, it helps the show it's a good thing and we appreciate it and you can get them all kinds you don't have to get black we have pink too we have all kinds of cool colors green I think there's a camouflage one maybe I'm not sure you, know, you have to go check it out so anyway so that was our puppy report and uh, that's going well and uh, we're in the swamp <laughs> let's move on would you like better radio with great talk shows and great music and less garbage? Good Talk Radio is your choice. We have great programming, great music, and a great attitude. We love our country. We love our listeners. Good Talk Radio. All right, guys, we are back. And uh, I kept the same background because it's this old party. Um, yeah, this is my backyard. I just modified the pool a little bit. What do you think? <laughs> Not. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about, and also I wouldn't mind hearing in the description below, what are some of the uh, things you're doing differently as far as uh, health? Have you actually thought about, if you really got the sniffles or something like that, would you be lying for the, for the uh, doctor's office as quick as you would in the past? Or would you have a second thoughts about going because you're afraid you might catch something? Uh, it's kind of weird. Um, I mean, it's bad enough I complain about our health care and how much we have to pay. But now I just like, gosh, unless I'm really convinced I've got something bad, uh, I ain't going nowhere. And I've been real fortunate, but we've been hunkering down. There's only a few. We go to Home Depot once in a while and Safeway and we keep our distance and uh, just simple things I've never done before, like wipe down my cart before with the handles and they're right there at the door, keeping distance in the lines and stuff. It's, uh, it's definitely odd, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know what I'd do if I'd started feeling like I had a head cold or something. And I, I never go to the doctor anyway, but I certainly don't think I'd want to go now. Uh, I think the worst place to catch this thing would be in a doctor's office or one of those, um, Healthcare places. I, I don't think uh, I'd want to go there. Um, I don't know. And I also like to know. Now, this is my opinion and stuff. I'd love to know how well do you think the government and the states are doing? Now, I know it's easy to get critical. And if you ever owned a business or been in corporations, you know what bureaucracy is all about. So, giving them that edge as far as how much you're going to rank on them is do you think uh um the federal folks are hustling the best that they can considering they've got to get everything approved and get through all the bureaucracy and the, and the politics and crap and i mean they're doing some really amazing things i've never seen in my lifetime trying to help uh small business regular business uh, i love the fact that um trump is not too happy about giving money out to the big corporations who bought back their stocks last time in 2008. They got all those bailouts, and so the first thing they did is they started buying back their stocks. And so they don't have any cash reserves. And so if you listen closely, a couple of times they already mentioned that he's like, I'm not too thrilled about giving money to companies that are just going to do stock buyback. Um, and all the reason they're doing that is to help keep their stock value up. So uh, I kind of appreciate that. Um, and the other thing somebody made the observation is Trump is the kind of guy who likes to say what's on his mind. And when you watch him read things from the, 
um, presentations they do every day. It, it almost like there's a, it seems like he's, he, he just knows that there's all the crap going on in the background and he can't talk about it. So he uh, just reads the line items and then he kind of like, I know, you can kind of tell he's doing it hesitantly. And he looks tired. They all look tired, actually. Uh, they're putting in long hours for us. So, benefit of the doubt. I'm just giving them benefit of the doubt. About the, now, all your states, you guys all have different kind of governors and, and, and mayors out there and stuff. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions on how well you think they're doing. Uh, some really jumped on the bandwagon for uh, lockdowns and others are hesitating, and others are keeping borders open. Um, I do actually am glad that they finally uh, shut down both sides of the borders on Mexico side and Canada. Um, and uh, gosh, I don't hear the uh, liberals freaking out right now. Jeez, that's amazing. Um, maybe a little wisdom came along. I could be wrong. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it does make sense to uh, keep people right where they're at and uh, those folks could actually really start some uh, real health issues. A lot of them came across the border with CV. And when we're trying to contain everything and keep everybody from moving around so we can slow this down, it's all about the bell curve. It's all about the bell curve. And uh, so I'm glad they're, uh, um, you know, they're not stopping eating uh, commerce. They're letting, you know, our supplies go through. But uh, we got a, we got a tough road ahead, guys. And uh, we have to be optimistic. We're going to have to be strong. We're going to have to do paradigm shifts. We're going to do things different. And that's not easy. Some people do not like change. And uh, even when I think like I, I like change, I can handle change, I don't like change. Change is hard. The youngins are going to, you know, things are just going to be so different. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of lessons learned and a lot of eye opening. And a little bit of uh, patriotism uh, really needs to kick in here. Nationalism, how important it is. And uh, also learning how to make more things at home, especially it has to do with our safety and our health. Uh, I think we got to learn how to make sure we're building that stuff here and making it, uh, even though it might be more expensive. And then it's really a bummer where gas prices are going to be dropping like a rock. <laughs> and none of us are driving. <laughs> not good. <laughs> what the bad thing is, is with the prices down, the shale folks, they, uh, they're they hurting, which means they're laying off and they can't make a profit at that low a barrel. Uh, it needs to be up at 50 to 80 just to survive. So, Sorry, I just had to have some of my coffee. And uh, I've been using a lot of uh, Amazon lately. Oh, gosh. Um, even my coffee now all comes in automatic on Amazon. Powdered milk, by the way, is available on Amazon. Um, we couldn't get laundry soap the other day, Amazon. So uh, that's been a real lifesaver. I, I'd be curious to find out how many people are actually using the restaurants and using the uh, Uber Lyft kind of thing to get food brought to their houses, or are they going down and picking it up in the parking lot and stuff? I'd be curious how many people are doing that. I haven't done any of it. I haven't got a pizza. We're doing everything at home. Um, really are not going out and really Sherry and I really don't anyway the money we save cooking at home is incredible uh, and then when we eat out all we do is bitch and complain how much we spent it's like I could have made two nice better steaks than that than what we spent at that place so uh, the Traeger is getting a lot of work the Blackstone is getting we're going to make omelets tonight with uh, good stuff in them and it's kind of fun and got the time to do it. And a lot of you guys do too. Uh, instead of sitting down just playing video games all day, learn some new things. Learn to cook, learn to store food, learn to pickle food, learn to can food. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. And get gardening. Oh, please do some gardening. It's just the time to start. If, um, you guys can get a, a, a garden started right now. And um, do simple things. Don't make it complex. Start off with some carrots. Uh, radishes are the easiest. E radishes are amazing. <laughs> They're quick. Um, also, the microgreens I was telling you guys about. Uh, get the kids involved. Do some microgreens. Um, 
You want to try tomatoes a little harder, um, cucumbers, you know, those things take time. But uh, sugar peas are the ones that are my favorite. You saw a couple of shows back, I showed you mine. So uh, we got some changes to make. We need to do it together. Um, I'm an older guy and I'm, I'm embracing it. Am I happy about it? No. Um, I like to challenge. And uh, I'm hoping you guys are like, okay, we can handle this challenge thing. We can do this. So, uh, <laughs> kumbaya. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back. I My chair is rolling backwards towards the lake. Oh, no, it's a stream. Here I come. <laughs> this is kind of weird. So, anyway, guys, I, uh, <laughs> hey, there's a river. Uh, and we're back. So, we're, um, I bet you you can't get your chair to do this. Huh? How about that? Whoa. So, <laughs> so uh, what the heck was I going to talk about? Oh, guys, uh, attitude. Um, we all definitely are bummed out. We're all going to have a rough ride here. So shows like ours and Mark Fugel and all these other people, they're uh, uh, hopefully you can enjoy some of the things they joke about and stuff and things we make fun of. Uh, we're all very serious and we're all impacted. Um, we all are feeling the same pain and we are not the only country. There's over 144 countries going through exactly the same way w things we are. And it's kind of each country is a little different. Their, their, their uh, governments are different. Some are communists, some are socialists, some are dictatorships, and some are capitalists like us. And uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how all of them do. And uh, some countries are doing a really good job at doing lockdown and trying to get things under control. We don't know what this in China. I don't know what's going on there. I don't trust the numbers at all. Um, I think they're just so caught up in the way they look and all that thing. And that's too bad. However, there's a lot of good countries to really pay attention to. I believe uh, uh, South Korea is a good one to see them really cracking down to see if they can get control of things and lower the bell curve. But uh, what it really is going to take is patriotism cooperation, support for each other, um, no hoarding, get only what we need, take only what we need, and uh, save the extras for others. Um, we need to stand in other people's shoes. We need to be respectful. We need to make sure that um, we don't get uh, other people sick and stuff like that. When we can't be selfish. We, uh, uh, we really need to bring our humanity out here. And so it's up to all of us. So I, uh, with that note, guys, I want to uh, thank you very much for watching the show. Don't forget to catch us on Good Talk Radio. Please leave your comments. Um, get some Range of Out poopy bags. And uh, I think we'll try to get some more puppy pictures as we go. Just have a little fun with that. And, uh, yeah, um, be safe. And thanks for watching. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.